Life in Imo State, a big tragedy, have fallen the people who are living on that particular environ as government storm attack a church in that area. Uh, the pastor was sent to judgment, the aid also, and about two people were kidnapped in that scene. This is happening live in Imo State, uh, where unknown government attacked a church. Uh, they killed the pastor and the aid and kidnapped about two people in the church. Meanwhile, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to this wonderful channel. We will bring you back-to-back -back update and information in case it's your first time of joining us on this wonderful channel. Kindly go ahead and subscribe, like, comment, share, and also remember to on your notification button so that whenever our news drop, you will be the first. We will collect them. Let's go down to the news proper, the full detail of what happened in a church in Imo State where government invaded. The reason why they invaded the church, who they are looking for, and who brought them. Government stormed a church, God's doing healing and deliverance military in Orodo Mbitolu local government area of Imo State on Saturday, resulting in the death of Samuel Obona, a youth leader. Samuel Obona, who was the owner of the field at home, a restaurant bar in the vicinity and a trusted associate of the church general overseer, evangelist Madabuchi Enes, also known as Dibia Ebere or Father M.E.M.C., met his demise during the attack. A confidential source mentioned that the group of gunmen, totaling around eight individuals, came to the church in, the, in two vehicles, a red Highlander and a black Lexus saloon car around 4 p.m. while a church program was in progress. It was reported that the government requested to meet the head of the church, but we are informed that he hadn't shown up yet, which infuriated them. Subsequently, they instructed the congregation to lie face down on the floor. He said, I have never seen anything like this before. The government, upon arrival at the church, and couldn't see the pastor order us all to lie down face down on the floor during which they collected all our personal belongings like book phones bags and cash before they zoomed off while driving out of the church compound we had several gunshots followed by a loud shout which we later learned was one of us elder obona he was on his way back to the church to rejoin us during the ongoing programs after stepping out to handle some tax. However, upon encountering the gunmen, he fled into a nearby bush. They chased after him and shot him multiple times there. Later, after driving a short distance, they let go of the two individuals they had abducted earlier. Just before driving out, they abducted two members, a man and a nursing mother, though they later released them along the Oro Oro Expressway. They also made away with the church owner's car, the source said. According to him, the incident has caused fear in the area, with many worried about their safety. Some residents had even left Orodo to ensure their well-being, and the church had been sourced by locking it all. Hey, my people, I don't see waiting they happen. This one is happening live in Owere Imo State. Live in Owere Imo State uh, as um. Government invaded a church in that area of Imo State. This thing is happening live in Orodo, Orodo Imo State. And um, they came to look for the pastor that owns the church. And because they did not see the pastor, uh, they have to ask all the members of the church to lie face down on the ground. And uh, according to the members, these people collected their phone, collected their purse, collected their cash that was with them, collected even in the offering money. And after doing that, they, they made a way with the um, old general overseer's car. They left with the man's car, and their intention was to come and poof the man. That was their intention. They wanted to poof the man. But when they dis did not see the man, they became infuriated. They turned the anger on the members. And uh, after they did that, they decided to leave. And that was when they saw one of the elder, this elder Obona that uh, they are talking about, who was killed at the scene. 
maybe uh, they thought that that Obuna was the pastor because from the way these people were narrating this thing, it shows that the the those people they don't even know like the main person who is the pastor. I don't know if you know something like that. Meanwhile, uh, a speculation is trending online where some people are saying that um, uh, they should stop comparing Nan the Kano to Belo Tinju. Uh, uh, Belo Toji, IPOB wants Buari's ex head Basha. Uh, IPOB is wanting Buari ex um, head Basha to stop comparing Mazin Nan the Kano and Melo Tuji. Meanwhile, let's go down. Let's see who, is, who Melo Tuji is. Uh, on Wednesday, the indigenous people of Biafra urged Ahmad Baha, the former media aide to ex President Muhammad Buari, to cease comparing their leader Nam de Kanu to the infamous bandit leader Belo Toji. IPOB warned Bashar that Kanu does not believe in terrorism like Tejo and his terrorist brothers. Emma Powerful, the spokesperson of IPOB, said Kanu's only prime only crime against the Fulani oligarchies was the establishment of the Eastern Security Network. Recall that Bashar had accused Kano and Tuji of causing harm to Nigeria, suggesting they should be kept in the worst prison facility in Nigeria. However, a statement by Powerful reads, Directorate of State DOS of the Indigenous People of Biafra warns Ahmed Bashar the aid to the former Fulani government of Buari to stop comparing unarmed freedom fighter Mazin Namdekanu with their terrorist brothers led by Tujibelo. Ahmed Bashar should not exonerate himself and his Fulani Kabao government who imported the murderous terrorists into the northern region of the country contraption called Nigeria by dragging IPOB and MNK's name into their terrorist mess. Our mission is legal and noble. Mazin Nandekanu, being a true Igbo Biafran, does not believe in terrorism. The only crime of Mazin Nandekanu and IPOB against the terrorist sponsored like Bashar was the creation of the Eastern Security Network, ESN operatives, to deter the Fulani expansion and conquest. It is obvious that the Fulani oligarchy sees Nam de Kano and IPOB as, as obstacle to their conquest agenda of Nigeria, especially in the southeast region. That is why they employed all their military might and media propaganda to intimidate and blackmail IPOB and Mazen Nam de Kano. The previous terrorist sympathetic government that Bashar served under spent billions of dollars and naira kidnapped Mazen Nam de Kano from Kenya and have detained him illegally against all court judgment. Unfortunately for them, as they detained Mazen Nam de Kano illegally, the terrorists they imported kept ravaging northern Nigeria. The Fulani Kabals consider Mazen Nam de Kano and IPOB as their enemies, but their real enemies were those python they nurtured that they are now consuming them and the entire northern region. And meanwhile, remember, that I will always tell you that a tree does not pass through the forest without bringing down trees. Of course, you see uh, that a uh, river, I mean, a river does not pass through the forest uh, without bringing down trees. As you can see, um, the river is now passing through down, the river is now passing through the, the forest and some trees are going down uh, because this is what is bringing Edward Kanono and um, all manner of things. Meanwhile, let's go down to another information. Southeast, Emeka Onomajoro, the situation is stable. A large number of IPOB and ESN have been neutralized. <laughs> uh, this is another information that other people are giving in the southeastern part of Nigeria. Meanwhile, um, IPOB themselves, uh, ES, uh, ESN themselves are reporting that they have not lost any of their men. But meanwhile, on the side and the part of the Nigerian army, uh, they are reporting the neutralizing of a lot of people. Let's go down to that information so that you can see what is happening for information's sake. According to a recent remark made by Major General Emekon Majuru, Chief of Defense Operation, the situation in the Southeast is stable. According to his report, the number and influence of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, and the Eastern Security Network, ESN, have declined due to the neutralization of many of their members. According to the Sun, Onomajoro highlighted that 
there has been a noticeable decline in IPOB's ability to enforce their sit-at-home orders on Mondays, which was a major tactic used to disrupt daily life in the region. The military efforts are showing positive results by reducing the effectiveness of these orders, allowing normal economic activities to resume. Onomajuru said in Southeast, the situation is also stable. A large number of IPOB and ESN have been neutralized and also there is a noticeable containment in their ability to enforce it at home on Mondays. This was a key weapon of IPOB fully weaponized and now we are beginning to reduce the ability of sit at home to improve social economic activities. The effects of IPOB in the region is gradually reducing and declining. This one is coming from Onomajoro, a military general who is reporting on the condition of the southeastern part of Nigeria. And according to him, uh, he said that a lot of um, IPOB and ESN members have been neutralized, which have resulted in reduction on the enforcement of Mondi sit at home in the southeastern part of Nigeria. And um, the question is, uh, this IPOB and ESM member that have been neutralized, who are they? What is their name? Where have their village? And where they are, are they coming from? Meanwhile, on the other side of the IPOB, IPOB is reporting that those who the Nigerian armies are poofing are not even their members. They do not belong to them. And according to them, they have counted themselves and they still believe that they themselves are complete. They themselves are complete. Meanwhile, something tragic happened in Anambra State, in Anambra State Market yesterday, where a Siena car uh, had accident and clashed into the market, and a lot of people were affected. Meanwhile, let's go down onto details. Let's go down to details so that we'll be able to see the full detail of that information. Uh, please. Uh, we know that um, nobody knows where that is coming from, uh, but at least there are some places that are not supposed to be like speed lane. Let's go down to what happened. Uh, an unknown number of people are feared dead after a speeding vehicle lost control and crashed into Oyago Market in Abagana, Njikoka, local government area of Anambra State on Wednesday. Details of the crash are still not available, but source said, Whereas we are damaged and many people may have also lost their lives. Uh, a lot of things have happened there. I saw the video and um, it is not what I can post here because that video uh, is not what everybody would like to see uh, because of Mehmeda uh, Sobarobara that is there. But as it is, this is where I'll be winding down the curtain. And if this is your first time of joining us on this wonderful channel, uh, kindly go ahead and subscribe, like, comment, share, and also remember to on your notification button so that whenever our news is dropping, you will be the first. We will collect them. Thank you for listening. God bless you.